Justin, can you hear us? Mm. Justin? Chris, Chris, say that again. Can you hear us? Quietly. Yeah. You get, uh, Justin, you turn on the mic so I can have something green. Uno, dos, tres. Ahí, perfecto. That's better. One, two, three. Uno, dos, tres. All right, Mike, you guys ready? Yep, very good. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for joining. We'll go ahead and get started um, as we welcome Marcelino to the club. We'll start with a statement from Carlos, and then we'll hop into questions. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Today, let's start with uh, questions in English for Marcelino. And then if we have questions, I'll make sure we save time at the end, just so we maximize his time. But with that, we'll go to Carlos. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, look, I think from, from our standpoint, we're, we're coming into today with a couple wins and a draw out of our last four matches. Um, we've been eliminating some of the errors that have caused early goals and individual mistakes. Um, we've now had some of our big players starting to perform and, and um, you start to see the confidence and the belief in the group and you see something like Rab last night who had a fantastic game, um, helps us earn a point. Um, so, you know, we hope this is uh, something that's a turning point for us and now uh, a much needed offensive spark uh, in the player, Marcelino, who we're about to introduce uh, is going to be very much welcome for us. Um, the group has been doing fantastic. Uh, when we, you know, we moved Pitti along, we were always looking to come in and, and have reinforcements, uh, strengthen the team. Uh, Marcelino is a player that we have been following for a long time, uh, which I spoke about earlier. Uh, he's a player with great composure, uh, very intelligent, a very dynamic player. Um, he's uh, he's very humble, um, and he he's not he's a man of a few words off the field, but I think he shows with his personality and his play on the field uh, what he's all about. Um, so after speaking with the league uh, earlier uh, this week and um, also speaking with our chief medical officer, um, Marcelino will be available for selection first Red Bull uh, Saturday night. Uh, he would have cleared the, the necessary quarantine and, and, and all that stuff uh, that we had to go through. So we're pleased to uh, we're pleased to welcome him, and um, Justin, I'll kick it over to you, but uh, Marcelino, welcome uh, to the club. Bienvenido al club, Marcelino. Thanks, Carlos. So with that, we'll kick it off with questions in English from Marcelino. Uh, Marcelino, uh, my name is Doug Robertson. I write for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Um, how do you think you're going to be able to help Atlanta United uh, secure a playoff spot in these remaining games. Marcelino, bienvenido al club. Muchas ¿Cómo gracias. Puede, eh, ¿Cómo crees que puedes ayudar al club a eh, conseguir un lugar en los playoffs esta temporada? Muchas gracias. Bueno, creo que, que con, con mi velocidad y con mi desequilibrio en tres cuartos para adelante poder tomar buenas decisiones para, para poder asistir a mis compañeros. I think I'll help the team with my speed uh, and my ability in the final third to try and create chances for my teammates. Hola Marcelino, bienvenidos. Um, how has this adjustment been? And I know due to COVID you've had to be training on your own. Have you had a chance to meet the guys yet or will, that, will it come down to Saturday of mixing with the team? ¿Cómo ha sido este ajuste para ti y tomando en cuenta todo lo del, del protocolo de cuarentena, si has podido conocer a alguno del, de los compañeros hasta ahora? Bueno, sí, es verdad que bastante atípico todo lo que está sucediendo y, y a mis compañeros solamente por lo visto jugar por tele y, y no más que eso. Yeah, it's, it's very atypical with everything that's going on. Um, so I've only been able to see my teammates play on television up to this point. But when is the first time he'll meet the team? Y cu bueno, entonces, ¿cuándo sería la primera vez que, que conoces al grupo? La verdad que no lo sé. Creería que recién el lunes. Eh, el lunes, has dicho? No, pero sí, sí. <coughs> pues... Puedes jugar este sábado. Sí, bueno, entonces va a ser el sábado. 
it'll be Saturday then. Thanks. Hi, Marcelino. My name is Joe Patrick. Uh, what have been your initial impressions of just coming to Atlanta, <laughs> seeing the training ground, being you know, seeing all the facilities, and being able to use all of what Atlanta United has? ¿Cómo han sido tus tus impresiones eh, al al ver al club, las instalaciones y, y todo que el club tiene que ofrecer? Eh, sí, la verdad que que es todo muy lindo. Eh, la infraestructura del club es hermoso y y el mismo estadio también es espectacular. Yeah, it's all very beautiful, the facilities that the club has uh, and the stadium as well. Hey Marcelino, well, what, what drew you to Atlanta and what made this the right step for your career? Marcelino, ¿qué fue lo atractivo de, de llegar a Atlanta y cómo crees que puede ser? O, o ¿Cuál es el objetivo? Bueno, como lo dije en una nota en Argentina, a mí me, me sedujo mucho eh, la afición, la verdad que, que es impresionante. Y también eh, ver que es un club modelo acá de Estados Unidos, al que tiene mucha vidriera también para Europa. I think one of the main things was the fan base. Uh, it has a, a spectacular fan base, and that was something that caught my attention. And also the fact that the club can be, um, you know, a jumping point to Europe. Carlos, um, for, for how long uh, did uh, he quarantine, and when did MLS tell you that he was available for Saturday? Yeah, so they have to go through a 10 day quarantine. Um, and um, so that's part of the protocol. And then we have to get sign off from our chief medical officer. And then when I spoke with Aleko and Demetrius on the phone, um, we went through the whole thing. You know, we send in our, our submission and they give us the clearance that he's uh, then available for uh, selection that we completed the necessary um, steps to, to have him uh, available. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a, it's an interesting process right now with, with COVID and, and all these different protocols, but um, uh, well, luck, luckily we were able to um, get him in in time. So his, his first team training session, I think he said is Saturday. Is that accurate? He, he can't train with him until Saturday? No, he won't be able to train with the team until next week. Um, oh, so okay. his <laughs> ability is going to be with the team Saturday for the game. Okay, thank you. Question, question for Marcelino. Uh, Marcelino, you of course played for or played with Miguel Almiron at Lemus, and I'm sure you are very familiar with him. What is your relationship with him, and how much of watching his success playing for Atlanta and then going to Europe played into you ultimately signing with Atlanta United? Bueno, Marcelino, dice que tú has jugado con Miguel Almiron antes en Lanús. ¿Cómo es tu relación con Miguel? Y bueno, viéndole jugar Miguel aquí y luego ir a Europa, si eso te impactó eh, cuando estabas pensando en, en el, el traspaso. Bueno, sí, eh, era muy amigo de Miguel en la NU. Después de que él se vino para aquí, no, perdimos relación. Y, y sí, también una de las cosas que me motivó fue ver cómo Miguel vino aquí y pudo ir a Europa. Yeah, I had a very good relationship with Miguel when we were at Lanús, and then later we didn't talk as much when he was here, but I was able to see what he did and see him move on to Europe, and that influenced me. To add to Miggy, is there any players, um, Marcelino, that you know currently or played with that are in MLS right now, or guys you've crossed paths with that are even in Atlanta United? Marcelino, ¿conoces a algunos otros jugadores que ahora están en la MLS? con quien, bueno, conoces o, o con quien has jugado antes? Eh, bueno, a, acá enfrenté a, a Barcos y a Remedi y también tengo muy buena relación con, con Valery y con Seba Blanco que estuvieron en el Club Lanús. So I played against Barco and Eric Remedi before and I also have a good relationship with Valery and Sebastian Blanco okay. uh, who, who were also at Lanús. Gracias. Hey Marcelino, my name is Kevin. Uh, I'm curious to know a little bit about your game when you were younger. Did you play in a different position at all or was it always as an attacking midfielder? And then who were some of your um, your stars as a kid that you looked up to in Argentina? Some of the big influences on your career. Cuando eras más joven y hasta este momento en tu carrera, um, has jugado otras posiciones y la segunda pregunta es ¿Quiénes quizás fueron tus ídolos argentinos? 
como jugadores? Bueno, te, te respondo la segunda primero. Mi ídolo es eh, Riquelme. Y repetime la primera. La primera es si, si antes en tu carrera has jugado en, en otras posiciones o en, en qué posiciones has jugado. Está bien, sí puedo jugar tanto de interno por izquierda como por derecha y también lo puedo hacer de extremo por izquierda. So my idol is Raquel May and in terms of positions I can play um, inside on the right or on the left as an interior midfielder and I'm also comfortable on the left wing. I have one for um, Carlos. Um, Carlos, of course, with Presolino signing and now obviously with Barclaystone in the lineup, um, that third DP spot is still open. I know you can't specifically talk about who you're targeting as far as names are concerned, but have you kind of gotten the feel of who you might target for that third DP slot? Um, so uh, Marcelino is coming in as, as our third DP. Uh, and then we have we have Plarco and, and Joseph. Uh, he still counts as a designated player, even though he's uh, he's on the season-ending injury list. Right. Sure. For Marcelino, what has he made? He said he's watched it when he nodded on television. What has he made of the team's playing style so far? Marcelino, por lo que has podido ver de los partidos de televisión, ¿qué opinas del estilo de juego del equipo? Bueno, es bastante parecido a lo que veníamos jugando en la NU. La verdad que tienen una idea clara, tratan de salir jugando para, para tener un ataque más limpio y la verdad que, que y, a, y tienen un ataque muy directo, que eso también me gusta mucho. It's similar to the style that we played at Lanús, uh, which I think it, uh, they have a very clear style. They want to try and build out of the back and also to be direct, uh, which I think is, is good. Any questions in English before we switch to Spanish? Yeah, yeah I have I have one more. Yep. D did he have uh, any hesitation about leaving Argentina to come to the United States during this time of COVID? Tenías alguna duda en salir de Argentina en este momento eh, con, con la pandemia? ¿Cómo? No te entiendo. Si, si, eh, si tenías alguna duda de esta decisión de salir de Argentina con todo lo que está pasando en este momento. Bueno, la, desde que se presentó esta oportunidad yo estaba decidido en venir para acá, sí o sí. When this opportunity came about, uh, I had my mind made up to come here, uh, no, no hesitation. One more for Carlos, if we have time. Um, I guess, just Carlos, what are your expectations for uh, Marcelino kind of immediately and, and when you would kind of expect to see the best version of him? Yeah, so uh, I think that, that's a really good question. Uh, Marcelino is coming in. He had uh, a decent amount of preseason uh, down in Argentina with the news preparing for this next season. Um, you know, we can't expect him to come in and be hitting top form from, from day one, uh, but he's a great professional. He's looking pretty fit to, to us right now. So we hope he comes in and, and has an impact, but I think we've got to give him a few games to get settled, uh, understand his teammates, uh, understand the league a little bit, right? But um, no, we, we think uh, he'll have a good chance to hit the ground running. We just, you know, I think we need to build the expectations week by week with him. All right, anything else in English? Yeah, if I could get one more for Carlos. Uh, you, you mentioned at the beginning of this, it kind of feels like a turning point for the team, bringing in Marcelino at this point. I uh, imagine that Barco will be back at some sometime soon. Do you think that um, making a run at the playoffs it, it, or in the playoffs is a real possibility now with this team, potentially getting healthy, getting guys back at certain situations late in the season? Yeah, I think, Joe, the most important thing for us is to, to get into the playoffs. Um, you know, I, I, we have not been in great form uh, for the season. Uh, I think you saw uh, some belief in the guys. We're starting to get some confidence. Like I said, we're eliminating some of the individual errors. We're going get to get a big boost here with Marcelino. Uh, Jurgen's coming back uh, in, into the fold. You have um, Rosetto starting to become healthy as well. Um, and then Barco, it's been a bit unfortunate for him. And, and I'll touch on that real quick because I, I've read a lot of the speculation is he holding out because of a move is he you know what's happening with the kid um it's been unfortunate for him he's had a few setbacks with his injury um he's trained with the team completely he's trained on his own we get him ready for the game 
Um, and then unfortunately we have to make the decision at the last minute um, that he's not available to play. Um, is there interest in him from overseas? Yes, he's a top player um, and there's always interest in him, um, but that was not the case. This is not the case now. He's desperate to get back out there on the field. He's doing everything he can. He's coming in three times a day with our, our trainers, getting the treatment. They're doing a great job with him. Um, he's doing a lot of different things. So, you know, hopefully we see him Saturday night uh, available. If not, hopefully Wednesday, but it's, it's, it's not a long-term thing. So that's why we have him on the day today. And I know it can be fr frustrating at, at some times, um, but there's no funny business going around with that. The kid's head is here in Atlanta. Um, he's been, like I said, he's been doing everything he can, nutritionally, hydration, treatment to get back out there on the field. Um, and that will also be another big boost. And we look forward to him and Marcelino combining out there, uh, you know, for some games uh, left in the regular season. Okay, with that, we'll open it up to Spanish questions. Marcelino, ahora vamos a tomar preguntas en español. Vale. Marcelino, bienvenido. Eric Alexander de Siempre United. Eh, Atlanta es conocido por buscar jugadores en Sudamérica. Tenemos historial con Barco, Villalba, Leandro González Pires. ¿Qué se dice de Atlanta United en Argentina y en Sudamérica? ¿Qué influye tanto para que los jugadores decidan venir acá? Bueno, yo lo primero que, que tomé en cuenta fue que, que estuvo Miguel y... Y bueno, viendo lo bien que le fue a Miguel acá, eso también me ayudó a tomar esta decisión. Y también es porque consideramos que Atlanta United es uno de los clubes más grandes de Estados Unidos, en Sudamérica. Justin, ¿estás going to translate that? ¿O cómo does that work? I was just going to leave it from this point on, just so we could um, be a little more efficient with this time. But if, if we don't have any other questions in Spanish, then we can, can go back to English questions. Bueno, si no hay otra, yo, yo hago otra pregunta. Marcelino, llegas en un momento complicado para el equipo. Eh, está atravesando posiblemente uno de sus peores años en su corta historia. ¿Qué te motiva y qué, qué propones tú? que sientes que puede ayudar al club a volver a tomar la forma que han tenido por los pasados años? Bueno, yo vengo a poner mi granito de arena, vengo a ayudar al equipo para estar lo más alto posible y dejar la, la institución lo mejor parada posible. Vengo a apoyar. Yeah, I'm coming here to contribute as much as I can to the team and to help this institution uh, to reach the highest level it can. Uh, yeah, if there's oh, no one else who's going to ask you anything. Go ahead, yeah, we'll, we'll just open it back up. Okay. Can, can he, uh, Marcelino, talk about, uh, I think I read that he bought his parents a house and that he's donated money uh, to his former academy, just why those things were important for him to do? Marcelino dice que, que vio algo que compraste una casa para los padres y... And that he helped the academy was that the same? I, I think he donated a lot of money to a uh, former academy that he came up with, mm -hmm. I, I believe. Y también que habías donado dinero a, a tu escuela de fútbol, si es si es cierto y si puedes hablar un poco, un poco de esto. Sí, es cierto. Le pude regalar, eh, cumplí mi sueño de poder regalar la casa a mis viejos. Yeah, that's true. I was able to fulfill my dream to buy my parents a house. Y, y Marcelino, ¿donaste algo de dinero a la escuela o, o tienes alguna relación con, con tu escuela de fútbol? Creo que, si no entiendo mal, es, son los derechos de formación por haber salido de ese club. He says, if I understand correctly, it was the, um, the payments that went to the club because they helped with my development. Uh, okay. Th there was a story that he had donated some money. I, I thought I'd read. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Justin, I have a question for Marcelino and another for Carlos. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, I'll start with uh, Marcelino. Marcelino, te habla Felipe Cárdenas con The Athletic. Bienvenido a Atlanta. ¿Cómo estás? Hola, buenas. Muchas gracias. 
Mira, esta llegar acá, llegar a la MLS, llegar a Atlanta, lo has dicho un par de veces ya, pero quiero saber si esto para vos es algo, es algo soñado, es algo que, que aspirabas como jugador de fútbol estando en Argentina, llegar a esta liga, o seguís aspirando para más. Bueno, sí, es que en el último tiempo esta liga se ha vuelto muy popular y creo que anhelaba venir acá y creo que dentro de unos años eh, la MLS va a ser una de las potencias mundiales del fútbol. Yeah, it was a dream for me to come here and I think in a few years this will be one of the, the biggest soccer leagues. And then uh, the question is for Carlos. Carlos, you touched on just the form of the team at the top of the call and um, I appreciate that because I think that's, you can kind of see a little bit of progress with this club. Going back to what you talked to us about, about a couple of weeks ago, just about accountability and, and kind of pointing the finger at you, something that you said. How, could you expand on that? Like, do you, considering obvious with the caveat that Joseph is injured and that that really affected the team, are you are you pleased with the way the roster has turned out after the offseason moves? Are you are you happy with where this roster is currently? I think so. Look, uh, Felipe, I think we're going to have to look at, at the end of the year and see where we end up, right? We've had quite a few injuries. Uh, we have not been able to have partnerships around the field for more than a couple games at a time. So we've had to chop and change. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing for me is you see uh, the guys are responding. Um, we're having to play a tad bit different uh, than, than we played earlier in the year. Um, as you saw last night, we're not necessarily high pressing the entire game. Um, so we've had to alter for, for personnel. Um, which is okay. Um, at the moment, we need to get wins. We need to be effective. And, and um, yes, have that accountability. And like I said, that's myself included. Uh, the players on the field, they've stepped up. They've responded very well. Classy and the staff are, have continued to work hard uh, throughout this. And we're going to get another big boost here with uh, Marcelino coming in um, that hopefully carries us into the playoffs. And then, look, if we're healthy in the playoffs minus Joseph, which is a massive loss for us, as you guys know, Um, anything's possible. So let, let's roll the dice uh, when we get in the playoffs. And then, Carlos, do you have uh, an update they can give us regarding the, the search for the permanent coach? Any Anything there? Same as last time. It's going well. Um, we've narrowed down our candidates, um, but I, I don't have anything to update you on right now. Carlos, um, last fact, question, Doug. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. If I could circle back to what you were uh, saying about Barco and appreciate you providing an update on that. Uh, I understand we don't know what the injury is. Uh, it sounds like a soft tissue thing, but we don't know. Can you either say what the injury is or say why you can't say what the injury is, please? No, um, but I will tell you he's the most fouled player in the league. Uh, I don't know if that's still correct. Uh, he's missed a few games recently, but um, teams target us. And you, you see that we were the most fouled team in the league. He was the most fouled player in the league. So we're not going to give any information uh, over to other teams to go and target these guys um, where they potentially are, are returning from something. So um, it's not, we're not trying to, to do anything cheeky or, or anything like that. It's just, uh, unfortunately for the kid, he, he wants to be out there and uh, you know, he, he's had a few setbacks. All right, thanks guys. With that, we'll conclude the call. But before we go, we'll have Marcelino stand up and take a photo with his new kid. Marcelino, para terminar, si puedes, ponte de pie y sacamos una foto con la camiseta, por favor. Okay, good. Thank you. Hey, Justin, is that going to be put on the MLS photo site thing? Imagine. Yeah, I can get you the recording and the photo as well. Well, I just did the photo of him holding up the...